economics as a discipline has undergone numerous transformations since its inception, evolving through the contributions of various scholars and the changing tides of societal needs and values. However, one of the most contentious shifts in economic thought has been the systematic undermining of the principles advocated by Henry George, a 19th century economist admired by many and best known for his proposal of land value taxation or LVT. With his incredible book, Progress and Poverty, George's ideas which aimed at addressing economic inequality by taxing the unearned income generated from land posed a direct challenge to the entrenched interests of landowners and the economic elite. This video is about the book Corruption of Economics and it seeks to explore how economics as a field has been corrupted to diminish and sideline George's contributions, reshaping the discipline in a way that serves the interests of the powerful at the expense of broader societal welfare. The corruption of economics is not merely a matter of academic debate, but a deliberate process that has deep implications for policy and social justice. At the heart of this corruption is the transformation of economic theory, particularly the shift from classical to neoclassical economics. Classical economists, including Adam Smith, David Ricardo, and John Stuart Mill, recognized the land as a unique factor of production that warranted separate treatment due to its fixed supply and intrinsic value. Henry George built upon this foundation, arguing that the wealth generated from land should benefit society as a whole, rather than accruing to private landowners. His proposal for a land value tax aimed to capture this unearned income for public use thereby reducing inequality and promoting economic efficiency. However, the rise of neoclassical economics marked a significant departure from these principles. By amalgamating land with capital, neoclassical theorists effectively obscured the unique role of land in the economy. This theoretical shift was not merely a natural evolution of economic thought, but a response to the threat that George's ideas posed to the powerful economic interests. Landowners, industrial capitalists, and their allies recognized the radical implications of land value taxation for wealth redistribution and sought to undermine its theoretical basis. The corruption of economics involved a concerted effort to marginalize George's work and to redefine economic theory in ways that protected the wealthy landowner's interests. The book titled The Corruption of Economics, co-authored by Mason Gaffney and Fred Harrison, takes you on a critical journey through the evolution of economic thought, asserting that the discipline has been systematically skewed to serve the interests of wealth and power. They show that this kind of corruption has masked the true role of land in the economy, leading to policies that exacerbate inequality and hinder economic efficiency. Through rigorous analysis and historical examination, Gaffney and Harrison uncover how and why economic principles have been manipulated, calling for a fundamental reorientation towards a more equitable and truthful economic science. Historical context and theoretical foundations. This book situates its critique within a historical framework tracing the evolution of economic thought from classical to neoclassical economics. They argue that classical econ economists from Adam Smith to Henry George recognized land as a distinct factor of production with unique economic properties. However, the rise of neoclassical economics saw land merged with capital, obscuring its special role and the implications of its private appropriation on wealth, distribution, and societal welfare. Gaffney and Harrison meticulously detail how this theoretical shift was not merely a natural progression of economic thought, but a deliberate transformation influenced by vested interests. 
they suggest that powerful landowners and their allies worked to reshape economic theory to protect their wealth from the threat of land taxation, which was gaining popularity through the advocacy of Henry George and others. Critique of Neoclassical Economics Central to the book's argument is a critique of neoclassical economics for its failure to adequately account for the role of land. They argue that by treating land as capital, neoclassical economics ignores the fundamental differences between the two. Land is finite and fixed in supply, whereas capital is reproducible. This conflation leads to flawed analysis and policies that fail to address the root causes of economic inequalities and inefficiencies. The book also challenges the neoclassical model's assumptions about market efficiency, competition, and rational behavior, arguing that these assumptions do not hold when considering the unique characteristics of land. This book highlights how land speculation and monopolization contribute to economic cycles of boom and bust exacerbating social disparities and undermining economic stability. Advocacy for land value taxation. A significant portion of the corruption of economics is dedicated to advocating for land value taxation or LVT as a remedy for the distortions and inequities perpetuated by current economic policies. LVT, a concept championed by Henry George, involves taxing the unimproved value of land rather than the structures built upon it. Gaffney and Harrison argue that LVT would promote more equitable wealth distribution, reduce speculative bubbles, and encourage productive use of land, leading to broader economic benefits. They also provide evidence and theoretical arguments to support their case for LVT, suggesting that such a tax system would not only be fairer, but also more efficient than current tax structures. They argue that LVT aligns with the principles of economic justice and efficiency, encouraging the optimal use of resources while minimizing economic distortions. Contemporary relevance and conclusion. The corruption of economics concludes by underscoring the contemporary relevance of its critique and proposals. In an era marked by growing economic inequality and environmental challenges, Gaffney and Harrison's call for a re-evaluation of economic foundations and policies is particularly important. The book challenges readers, policymakers, and economists to reconsider the role of land in the economy and the potential of land value taxation as a tool for social and economic reform. They meticulously research historical analysis and passionate argumentation make the corruption of economics a compelling and provocative read. It serves not only as a critique of economic thought, but as a call to action for more equitable and truthful approach to economics. Their work challenges the status quo and invites a rethinking of how economics is taught, understood and applied. While the book's proposals, particularly regarding land value taxation, may seem radical to some, they offer a well-argued solution to the systemic issues of inequality and inefficiency in modern economies. As such, the corruption of economics remains a vital contribution to economic literature and a must read for those seeking to understand the deeper forces shaping our economic landscape. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then I think you will like this one here. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.